Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, The Rhino's Horn. An amazing fact. Besides being a very large and strong animal, one of the most notable features about a rhinoceros is its horn, or horns. The name rhinoceros comes from two Greek words, rhino, meaning nose, and seros, meaning horn. It is amazing that this mammal, which can weigh up to two tons and grow up to six feet tall, is a vegetarian. There are five different rhinos in the world. Two come from Africa, the black rhino and the white rhino, and three from southern Asia, the Indian rhino, the Sumatran rhino, and the Javan rhino. Rhinoceroses have very thick skin, half an inch to two inches, with folds that make them look like they have armored plating. The best friend of a rhinoceros is the tick bird, or oxpecker. It eats ticks off the rhino, but is also a guard, making lots of noise when danger lurks close by. Rhinos are often thought of as ill-tempered, but probably have become more so in areas where they are constantly being disturbed. They do have poor eyesight, but excellent hearing. When they attack, rhinos usually lower their heads, growl or grunt, and come charging at up to 30 miles per hour, striking powerful blows with their horns, not somebody you want to get in the way of. Rhinos have only one enemy, humans. Unfortunately, they have been hunted to almost near extinction. Even with strong laws, poachers still make a dent in the diminishing population because of rhinos' valuable and sought-after horns. Does a rhino have one horn or two? It depends. The Javan and Indian rhinos have only one horn, while the white, black, and Sumatran have two. The horn is actually made up of keratin, the same material as our fingernails and hair. Some people believe the horn has medicinal value when ground into powder. Armed park rangers in South Africa try to stop poachers who can get up to $25,000 thousand dollars for a horn. In 2011, up to 448 rhinos were killed for their horns. The Bible refers to horns in many different ways. In prophecy, horns stood for kings, kingdoms, or other powers. One such horn will play a role in the time of the end before Christ comes. That horn will be destructive. Daniel writes, I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. And there, in this horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking pompous words. Daniel 7 verse 8. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. Psalms 132 verse 17. And that's the end of the first devotional. And the second one is titled, Be Ye Holy. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1 verses 15 and 16 The grace of Christ changes the whole man, making the coarse refined, the rough gentle, the selfish generous. It controls the temper and the voice. Its outworking is seen in politeness and tender regard shown by brother for brother, in kind, encouraging words, 
and unselfish actions. An angel presence is in the home. The life breathes forth a sweet perfume, which has holy incense, ascends to God. Love is manifested in kindness, gentleness, forbearance, and long-suffering. The expression of the countenance is changed. The peace of heaven is revealed. There is seen a habitual gentleness, a more than human love. Humanity becomes a partaker of divinity. Christ is honored by perfection of character. As these changes are perfected, angels break forth in rapturous song, and God and Christ rejoice over souls fashioned after the divine similitude. And that's the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you all is titled, Draw Nourishment from Above. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalms 1 verse 3. Of all the trees, the scotch fir tree is one of the best from which Christians may draw inspiring lessons. Church members who are standing in their lot and place are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Although their surrounding circumstances may be adverse, yet, like the fir tree, with little soil about its roots, they constantly reach heavenward, drawing nourishment from above. Like the fragrant boughs of the fir tree, they impart grace for grace received. The hidden nourishment that comes from God is returned to Him in purest service. And that's the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.